Marcus, I would like to hear how far do you believe you could go with Rim Tate? We have great players in the league already as it is, so I have a lot of catching up to do. But that's pretty much one of my goals is to eventually, if it's not, you know, this time, you know, maybe some other time when it resets, you know, I'll be uh, better prepared. Yeah. So that is uh, one of my goals. You know what? Imagine, like, let's project ourselves into the future to where every city in DFW has over a thousand mm -hmm. rim page players. And let's say you find yourself ranked 800 and someone asks you, do you see yourself being a city champion? That might be a bit for your mind to believe as something that's possible for you. But you can take it in chunks. You can say, let me get in the top 500 in this league, in my city, and strive to get out of 800th place and get into that top 500. And now you have the sense of belonging. You earned that. You're in that top 500 because of your effort, because of your skill. And now you can say, okay, if I can go from 800 to 500, maybe I can get into the top 300. And that's a new goal. And that's sort of what you've done. Like you said, let me, let me get into this top 10. <laughs> And right. I think you're there after today. Now the top five seems more believable, doesn't it? Yes, sir. I'll tell you, one thing is just being consistent. Yeah. And one of the reasons Ashton is where he is, is just mm -hmm. sheer consistency, going yeah. up and playing matches. And it's also right. different, uh, something that you are showing as well. You have the mindset of a champion. You are thinking, what, what will it take for me to get there, to achieve the best of my ability? Imagine how many lives we will touch and inspire and what it will do for us to know that we have given all that we had inside us. Yeah, that makes sense. First question, how well do you yeah. understand Rimpage's opportunity for basketball players? When someone says, what is Rimpage? What is your answer? What does it mean to you personally? Oh, man. Hit me with a tough one. <laughs> I would say with me, it's very personal to the point to where Rampage is another opportunity. Like I told Daniel, he was asking me what was my record before I, I really just started, you know, getting wins and yeah. my little win streak. I told him, like, I was up front. I was like, 0 and 9. Yeah, yeah. I, wow. I was 0 and 9, so I wasn't afraid to, like, say that. And most people in the group know, you know, how I'm starting to, like, progress. And it it became personal because it was like I know my talent and I know what my skill set is, and I'm going against you know probably top five players you know at that time and stuff like that. So I was still kind of like unsure of myself. So when I started, you know, slowly trying to get like win after win, it was more just I uh, I need to take it more seriously instead of just more like I'm playing, but I know I'm not playing to my potential. And the losing aspect of it put me in the mindset of like, man, how like serious do you want to play? Because to me, it's it's more of a pride thing and a respect mm -hmm. because I wouldn't I wouldn't play the game, you know, whether it's, you know, recreational or rampage or anywhere else, knowing that I'm losing and it's the way that I'm losing. I wouldn't disrespect basketball like that for me personally. So that's kind of like how I see it. It's more of a reflection of myself because if I'm putting out a bad product, then that means that I'm not putting a good product out for Rampage and myself. Yeah. Wow. So that's kind of like the mindset that I had to switch pretty much when I started winning. It was about me and not Rampage because I can lose matches, but other people yeah. can win. But if I start winning matches, then it makes myself feel good and also promotes Rampage in a sense. Yeah. Yep. And your city. And yes. your city. Right, right. When you win, mm. everyone wins. Isn't that amazing? You win yeah. personally. Rampage yeah. because we get to shout out about our players. Your city wins, your family. Right, right. Even though it's still one-on-one, -on -one, it's still team because... Yeah, you're helping me get the exposure, yeah. and I'm helping y'all putting it out there, telling yeah. the people. It, then that's it. With also racking up wins and stuff like that, then that kind of elevates everything. So it's kind of like a hand in hand thing. That's it. That's exactly it. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, we look good by making you look good, and you look good by <laughs> making us look good. One of the reasons I asked for your profile page, if you were to to achieve some huge accomplishment, who are the three people that will be the happiest for you in your life? Okay, first, I would have to say my granny. Uh, she's pretty much been there through thick and thin. She's my number one supporter in anything that I do. So she would be obviously number one. 
Number two, my dad, just the stuff that he's taught me. And, you know, he knows he's seen me play basketball. So he kind of gives me that little nudge like, oh, man, you know, you can you can be real good and stuff like that. <laughs> you know? that. That's good, you know, coming from him and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, he would be he would be my second person. The third person would probably be my aunt. She's been another huge supporter with my grandma, pretty much uh, just praying over me, asking God for, you know, favor in my direction and stuff like that. She she knows it's probably well as, you know, my grandma, or my dad, you know, how much, you know, I love basketball. It may not have took the course that I've seen, but, uh-huh. you know, she does know of me playing in Rampage. You know, I always tell her, when I win, when I lose and stuff like that, she'll ask me, ah. well, how, how did you lose? You know, what could you have done better and stuff like that? So she's pretty much like that, that sports auntie. So, so brilliant when we have people present in our life who, who want, yeah. want to see us do well. Another question to help sort of flesh out the, what does this mean for you? What is your reason for doing Rampage? The main reason, this might sound crazy, but I kind of like, you know, sit to myself and I just, I just think about different outcomes. Like, you know, I played high school basketball, uh-huh. wouldn't, didn't play varsity. I played enough to where, you know, this is something that I want to do. Didn't play any uh, college basketball, but I played around other people that was, you know, talented, you know, that could uh-huh. play. So kind of like hovering around that area, I was more like, you know, I'm playing it enough. I started entering men's leagues, you know, trying to hoop more recreationally or just going to like courts and stuff like that, proving to myself, really. I mean, I have uh, people that I would want to say, like, you know, you said I couldn't really do this, but, you know, look at this, you know, stuff like that. Oh, I actually yeah. have like a like a, a track record now, an official yeah. track record. That's kind of like how I look at it, you know, and I could say like, you know, you could take it how you want to say, oh, well, this is not legit or whatever like that but i feel like uh-huh. the person doing it which is myself i i take it seriously so this is legit yeah. to me really just proving to myself that i can accomplish certain stuff even if it's just you know a day-by-day goal mm-hmm. that you know something is going to get you know checked off that list one analogy i love to use you can think of um rimpage as the invention of the car when everyone else is riding horses it's the yeah, next yeah. big thing <laughs> That's kind of the way that works is you have your unbelievers until that new idea takes over and mm. then they have to adopt it. And then that becomes the thing. Now, nobody thinks about riding a horse. You automatically think about getting a car. Mm. But there was a time when right. that was a new idea that was being challenged. Here's the other thing about legitimacy. What's more legitimate? Two guys arguing about which one is the better player or two guys getting on the court and playing a match and letting the outcome decide. The second option yes. That's what makes Rimpage legitimate. There's no more arguing. Get on the court and play. That's why it's a one-on-one league, because now you don't have teammates to blame or to to steal the credit from you. <laughs> it's just you and that other individual. And then we say, if, so let's say um, someone looks at Ashton and, and he's 32-1. and one, And mm-hmm. if you go on the website, it says Ashton is the best player in Dallas. If someone says, yeah, please, he's, he's nowhere near the best player in Dallas, then what we would say is join Rimpage and play him. And so it becomes this, either you get on the court and play or shut up. This is the right. switch that, you know, some people have like, oh, no, no, basketball is a team game. You are going to become oh. a better team player. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a one-on-one player, uh-huh. but I mean, you know, you got one person in front of me. So, I mean, like, you know, I got a whole <laughs> court to work with, not, you know, right. for other people. So that kind of makes it easier. You know, you're going to challenge somebody. Like, you know, I done seen you post on uh, in the Facebook uh, group chat for DFW. You Uh know, some people might, you know, say some stuff or whatever like that. You know, Mm -hmm. you come in like, well, how about you, you know, sign up with Rampage or, you know, come in. And then I I try to look for the comments and I don't be seeing no (laughs) no response to it. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And you know what that means? Their criticism means that. Exactly. If they're not brave enough to step into the arena, then they don't have the right Mm -hmm. to criticize. Yeah. You'll never find a hater who's doing better than you. <laughs> All your haters yeah. are under you, looking ah, up. <laughs> People who are above you are reaching down saying, come on, you can do it. Let's go. You got this. Exactly. You'll exactly. never find a hater who's doing better than you. Sometimes they're not even in the game. Right. <laughs> right. I can, 
you know, criticize somebody like, oh, this person, you know, I could probably beat this person just because mm-hmm. I see some type of weakness. But then what if I end up losing? <laughs> you're gonna be you know you have to compete you really right, sharpen right. your why that way like for you marcus i don't think the biggest difference between you being zero and nine and you winning your last six straight has is your skill something else happened something in there something in the heart shifted and right. you can tell me if i'm wrong what's the difference between the marcus who went zero and nine and the marcus who's won his last six i'm i'm, I'm pretty much my hardest critic so i'm always like looking back at film and pretty much on that 0-9 run, I can't make any excuses to say that I wasn't playing up to my standards because I'm always playing to the best of my abilities. It's just that I got beat by better people, mm-hmm. you know, than me. What am I doing wrong? And then you're pretty much right. It was it was all in here because losing kind of like does something to you, especially if you know you know you're giving it your all, or you're trying, or you know your shots are not falling that you normally would make. It's all mental. And I kind of understand that now. Well, I understood it, but I didn't pay attention to it much when I was kind of like on that losing streak. Uh, you sent me a, a little ebook, a couple yeah. of ebooks yeah. and stuff like yeah. that on uh, like the mental side of, you know, your mind and stuff and how that kind of like plays in a factor. So it was mm-hmm. just just taking it one game at a time. You know, if I lose a game, you know, did I give it my all? The person was better than me that day and stuff like that and just come back and then uh when I started the win streak it was just more of like in my mind I might be you know oh and not but I have to reset that's why wow. I'm kind of like this focus is on like getting to you know 500 even because yeah. that's pretty much or that's pretty much a reset so it's just yes. everything yeah. goes at that point so it was more of just watching the film uh, seeing like my flaws and my weaknesses, you know, did you know the people that I play, you know, I played a couple of people, I know two or three times, uh, I think on my record. So it was just pretty much like going back, watching those matches. Did I have some type of tendencies that made me lose those matches against them because they played me, you know, two or three times? Yeah. Um, even the people that I, you know, did eventually beat, it was just more of the mindset, like, you know, I can't lose, I can't lose, you know. Um, get to my spots, you know, a little bit more better, um, try to take advantage of the, like, you know, height, size, kind of like the first couple of moves or like, you know, how they play me and stuff like that. Just pay attention to it more because I work on certain stuff that kind of made, you know, seem like, man, why he take that shot? You know, or like, you know, you could have mm. took a better shot, but yeah. it's just like preparing for different people. Like, um, I, I would like to play uh, Chris Lee. Chris Lee, oh, so that's, okay. a, that's, that's a that's 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 a challenge right there. <laughs> okay, you know, can I tell him that? So it, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, my guess, yeah. Okay. So okay. it's kind of like you know him watching his matches and stuff like that. He's a real talented player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if he had any uh, uh, college ball experience or uh, high school ball, but he does have the talent. So it's kind of like adjusting to him would be uh, very difficult. It's kind of like similar to Donnell. Oh, yeah. You know, because how how I play against somebody probably a little bit more shorter than me is is completely different. And then with them being the two tallest players and stuff like that, I could kind of tell like I had trouble with uh, height. Yeah. You know, in okay. that sense, because I, I couldn't get off uh, certain shots that I would normally get on somebody that was uh, probably a lot shorter than me. Okay. And, you know, shooting wise, it was just pretty much well, I need to be able to shoot a particular shot the same way, regardless if they're shorter or taller. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I started winning, it was just more of, okay, like I'm getting like the confidence. It was kind of like, you know, the, the mentality was always there, but I just had to pretty much see it for myself. So mm-hmm. when the wins started coming, it was just more of, you know, I just got to, you know, the Kobe mentality. You know, how how you say, you know, are you willing to take away a win from somebody? Right, right. You know, pretty much. And that's what on this win streak is pretty much, you know, I'm here to have fun, but then I'm also here to, you know, improve myself and improve my record. So if you're standing in my way, then I have to take it as such. Oh, wow. That's exactly it, man. I'm so glad you heard that. A lot of people are not okay with that. They want to win, but they don't like the idea of taking it from someone else. 
winning is is a glorious thing and it sounds good and it looks good when we're looking at it but can you do it can you actually put the knife in and and take that victory away from that other person and send them away frustrated and angry and sad and who knows what else because that all, that's all a part of victory you don't <laughs> share victory yeah. somebody's going home upset and then here's the thing if it's not them then it's you you're the one and so you got to deal with that part too that doesn't feel good. Winning is, is something you really have to think through. It's a head thing. It's not just a skill thing. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you got my ass out, you know. I gotta get my drink. <laughs> it's official now. Nice. Oh, yes, sir. That's awesome. amazing, Marcus. All right. Well, listen, both of you guys are on winning streaks. Keith yeah. is on a three-game winning streak. Marcus is on a six-game winning streak. Let's keep this going, guys. <laughs>